All right, so this next unit we're going to be covering is Unit 6. Okay, so Unit 6 is going to be covering polygons, okay? So first off, we'll talk about kind of like what is a polygon, and then we're going to get a little bit deeper into with this unit um, with kind of really going in depth and more specifically with four-sided polygons, also known as quadrilaterals, okay? So first off, let's talk about what is a polygon, okay? So any type of polygon in general, so polygons normally are talking about shapes, but polygons are going to be very specific types of shapes, okay? So few criteria that a shape has to meet in order to be considered polygon. It has to be a closed plane figure, okay? So meaning that with all the size that the polygon may have, there can't be any gaps or any openings or anything like that. Okay, another thing is that a polygon has to have multiple sides. Okay, and I'm going to refine this definition a little bit, and I'm going to say that it has to have three or more. So that three plus, three or more sides in order to be considered a polygon. Okay, If it has one side, then it's really only just going to be a line. If it has two sides, then it's really only going to be an angle, but there's no way to really close that figure. So it has to be at least three sides to be considered a polygon. And another thing is that all sides are going to have to be straight. Okay, We can't have any curved sides in a polygon. Okay, So a couple of examples of what some polygons may look like. Okay, So we've got a triangle right here, three-sided figure. Okay, We have what appears to be a square, maybe a rectangle right here, but again, a four-sided figure uh, completely closed up. Right here, we have uh, what could be considered a rhombus, a diamond, a parallelogram, something like that. Again, just another four-sided figure. And then right here, we do have this cross, or if we're talking about it in terms of geometry, it could be a dodecagon because it has 12 sides. Okay. Now, again, we talked about how we can name all these polygons by their number of sides. Okay? And we talked about up to about 12. Uh, and then after that, we just kind of started calling it like a 15-gon or so on and so forth. So that would be a dodecagon. But then we have a couple examples of things that might not be considered polygons, okay? So, this right here, a circle, okay? It does not have any straight sides. So, because of that, a circle is not going to be considered a polygon for us, okay? This thing right here, okay? This V right here, if we turn it a different way, we can maybe call it an angle. Well, this thing does not have three sides, and it's also not a closed plane figure, okay? So, again, a closed plane figure is just meaning, like, if I could basically, like, drive something into this little gap if there's any gaps anywhere in the sides then it's not going to be considered a polygon so once we kind of get to where we can classify polygons as or classify shapes as polygons that is then we can get a little bit deeper into talking about things being a regular or an irregular polygon so let's talk about a regular polygon so a regular polygon is going to be a polygon that has all sides are the same length and all angles are the same measure okay so regular polygons have to be all congruent sides and all congruent angles so for example we can have a triangle be a regular polygon but it can't be any old triangle it has to be a very specific type of triangle and since we just got done with our units on triangles the only regular triangle that is is going to be a triangle where all the sides are the same length and all the angles are the same measure so we know that from last unit to be an equilateral, equiangular triangle. Okay, so again, this can't be any old triangle. It has to be a triangle that all sides are the same length, all angles are the same measure to be a regular triangle. So it has to be an equilateral, equiangular triangle. Okay, then we've got a four-sided figure right here. Okay, so again, not any four-sided figure will do. So a square, all four sides same length, all angles are right angles, so they're all the same. So a square will work as a regular polygon. So now we look at irregular polygons. And irregular polygons are basically every polygon that isn't regular. So the sides are not going to be equal in length. The angles are not going to have the same measurement. Now here's one thing with irregular polygons. Is that irregular polygons may have all the sides are the same length. And they may have that all angles are the same measure. But they won't have both. Okay, If they have both of those, then they'll be regular. If they don't have both, they'll be irregular. Okay, so right here, for example. Okay, so this right here is a triangle. More specifically, it's a right triangle. But the thing is, we know that a right triangle is going to be an irregular polygon because it doesn't have all angles the same. And technically, once we get into unit 8, we'll see that it couldn't have all three sides the same length either. But the one thing we do know about a right triangle is that it does have one right angle. So 
there's no way for this triangle to have all angles the same measure because we can't have a triangle with three right angles. So that's automatically a regular polygon. Okay, right here, this figure right here. Okay, so it's got two angles that are the same, but this thing in it appears to be some form of a trapezoid, another four-sided figure. It's not going to be classified as a regular polygon. Okay, another one right here. So here's an example of something that has some symmetry, but not completely. Okay, so a rectangle. It has all four angles that are the same. It has four right angles, but since its side lengths are not all the same, it can't be considered a regular polygon. It must be considered an irregular polygon. So now we talked about what is a polygon, what isn't, what is a regular polygon, and what's an irregular polygon. Now let's talk about some of the uh, relationships with their interior and exterior angles. Okay, so let's look at that. So, first up, we're going to look at the sum of the interior angles, okay? And this is going to be a couple different formulas that we're going to see pop up. So, let's look at this first one, okay? So, the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a convex polygon is going to be found using this formula, 180 times n minus 2, okay? So, when we talk about the interior angles, okay, so if I have some kind of a figure right here, Okay, so if I have this triangle, okay, and in this triangle, I've got angles on the inside of that triangle. So these angles are known as interior angles. Now, we're also going to talk a little bit about what an exterior angle is. Okay, so an exterior angle, if I was to take this bottom side and extend it a little bit, then this angle that is formed with one side of the triangle, or one side of the polygon, just in general, and the extension of another side, that's going to be my exterior. Okay, so interior is inside. Exterior is, ex is outside. So, now getting back to the formula. So, the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a convex polygon is found using this formula, 180 times n minus 2. And in this formula, n is going to represent the number of sides in a polygon. So let's look at how to, how to use this, okay? So this example, find the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a convex dodecagon. Okay, so look at the key words we got here. Sum of the measures of the interior angles, which is what we're dealing with up here. So just seeing these key words, sum of the interior angles, we know we're going to be using this formula, 180 times n minus 2. But in order to use this, we need to know what are the number of sides. So we're told right here this is a convex dodecagon. Okay, well, in a dodecagon, n is going to represent 12. A dodecagon has 12 sides. So, if we want to figure out what all of the angles inside a dodecagon must add up to equal, we're going to plug in n equals 12 into our formula. So, we'll get 180 times 12 minus 2. Well, when we go through and do order of operations, we take care of our parentheses first. So, 12 minus 2 is 10. 180 times 10 is 1,800. So, this means... For any 12-sided figure, the angles inside the interior angles will always add up to equal 1,800 degrees, okay? And we've already kind of implicitly used this formula before, okay? Just like I'll talk about up here with a triangle, okay? So think about a triangle. When a triangle, it has three sides, so N equals 3, okay? So if I was to plug this in, we get 180 times 3 minus 2, 180 times 1, 180 degrees. And we already talked about back in Unit 5 that according to triangle sum theorem that all of the angles in any triangle must always add up to equal 180. And so the reason why is because of this formula right here. So that's the sum of the interior angles. Now let's look at another one. So this one is for what if I want to figure out what is one interior angle? What is one interior angle's measure? So for this one, uh, this one gets a little bit more... Um, exclusive because it has to be a regular n-gon, just being a regular polygon. So this isn't going to work for all polygons. This one right here would work for all polygons. This one won't, okay? This one has to be a regular polygon, so all sides the same, all angles the same. So if you want to figure out what just one of those interior angles are inside a regular polygon, we're going to use this formula, 180 times n minus 2. So that's the same formula as before, 
but this time we're going to divide it by n. So we're going to divide it by the number of sides. So let's look at this example. Find the measure of each interior angle of a regular 20 gon. Okay, so measure of each interior angle, that's going to tell me we're using this formula, and of a regular 20 gon. So that's going to be the other key. We can't find the interior angle of every single polygon, but it has to be a regular, meaning all the angles have to be the same. So we're given right here, this is, we're talking about a regular 20 gon, so n is going to equal 20 for this example. So have my original formula, 180 times n minus 2 divided by n. I'm going to plug in n equals 20 into here and here. So I'll get 180 times 20 minus 2 divided by 20, which you could then say is going to be 180 times 18 divided by 20. Type that in your calculator, and you should get 162 degrees. Okay, so each interior angle in a regular 20 gon will be 162 degrees, which you think is probably a pretty big number, um, you know, because 162 degrees, that's going to be pretty close to just being a completely straight angle, something kind of like this. But if you think about it, in a 20 gon, if we wanted to figure out what all the angles inside a 20 gon would have to add up to equal, then it would be a really big number. It would be 162 times 20. So all the angles inside a 20 gon would have to equal over 3,000 degrees. So 162 compared to 3,000, it's not that big of a difference. Okay, so that's the interior angle. Now let's look at the exterior angles. So first up, we'll look at the sum of the exterior angles. Okay, so the sum of the measures of the exterior angles of any convex polygon, one angle at each vertex, is 360 degrees. So for this one, there is no formula. Okay, for this one, there is absolutely no formula. Just for any kind of a polygon, which again, the exterior angle, so if I had this triangle right here, Okay, so interiors are inside, exteriors are outside. So I'm talking about these angles right here. These three angles right here. They are always going to add up to equal 360. It doesn't matter if it's a regular polygon or irregular polygon. It doesn't matter how many sides there are. These angles will always equal 360. Okay, there's no formula for this. One. So let's look at this example. A convex hexagon has exterior angles that measure 32 degrees, 54 degrees, 67 degrees, 100 degrees, and 72 degrees. What is the measure of the sixth exterior angle? So hexagon. Hexagon means six sides, which also means six angles. So it has uh, these five given to us, 32, 54, 67, 172. So we know that when we take all of those five plus the other sixth one that we don't know, that they'll equal to be 360. So if we want to solve for that last one, we take all these, add them up, plus X representing our last angle, set it equal to 360. We then take all of these five and add them together, combining our like terms, and we'll get 325 plus X is equal to 360. So then lastly, if we want to solve for x, we just subtract 325 from both sides, and we will get that x will be 35. So the measure of that last exterior angle is going to have a measure of 35 degrees. Again, with this one, there's no formula. You're just going through, and you're plugging in all the numbers and then subtracting from the end. 